Welcome back. Today I'm going to play the next bot rated on uh, rated 1000. This is Laura from Austria. It's the next lowest rated bot on my list that I have not played yet. I'm going to let the computer choose the colors and I'm going to do as well as I can. It's she said something in Austrian I assume and then let's play something exciting. Well, hopefully the bot thinks that D4 is exciting. Judith has played 1d4 move a lot in her career. Okay, I'm going to quit reading the bots chat because it's just distracting. Uh, I don't chat with regular players, so I don't know why I would chat with bot players. But anyway, um, looks like the King's Indian or Indian Game Knights variation at this point. Um, King's Indian Defense. Okay. I think here I can put the Knight on c3 behind my c pawn. And they're going to castle, and now I can play e4, I believe, and just get a really good center. I know that uh, I faced this several times. I'm pretty sure that the one of the ideas here is to play d6 in preparation for e5. Um, I th think when e5 is played, I can just lock the center, but I don't know if that's best. I also don't remember here whether the opening, which one of these bishops comes next. I think, I mean, I'm tempted to play the light squared bishop out first because that prepares me to castle. So, not sure about that. I guess that prevents my bishop from coming to g5, but I, I'm pretty sure that e5 was supposed to be next. I think I can just castle now. Right? Or was I... I don't know. Maybe I was supposed to put the knight there. I don't know. Because if I had put the bishop there and then that came out, that wouldn't be any good, would it? Okay. Um, one question is, should I play d5 to help prevent that? But I don't know what difference it would make. Okay, I know what difference it would make. If I played d5 first and then black played e5, I could capture with en passant. Whereas if I left it here and they played that and I captured, it would be here. I I honestly don't know what the difference is. Yeah, I don't know if I'm supposed to play d5 here or not. I'm going to castle, get my king to safety. Now if there's a break in the center, I'll be okay. That looks like something that's played in the hippo but that's after you've fee and cattled both bishops and uh yeah and then you do the little pawn maneuvers on both sides at least that's what i've done several times playing the hippo um i do know that this i mean it opens up the uh some of these squares but not too much i mean the the pawn is still guarding that one and the knight is still guarding h7 and it doesn't really soften this yet because of of that. So I'm not sure. I do know that at some point here I'm supposed to get my queen off the back rank and as well as that bishop. I think uh, probably e3 is the best place for the bishop. I'm also wondering if I should worry about this, but I don't think so because if that is played, then can't my knight just go here? Or should I, I don't think I should play h3 to meet that because my opponent has two pieces, uh, sorry, two pieces looking right here. So even if I did this and they played that, I wouldn't want to take because, I mean, that would give them a, a nice pin there. Uh, I'm really not sure. And what would I just, I, I got to stop thinking about what's best and what would I normally play here? See, I was going to put the bishop here, but now that that pawn is there, actually it doesn't matter that that pawn is there. The knight could still come here and just hit that bishop immediately. So maybe I should just put this bishop here and the, and the queen here. Or does it matter? I, 
I think I'm going to put the queen here in case this ever opens up. And that way I won't mess up my pawn structure when uh, the knight is captured. If, if that's what black chooses to do. I know there's a lot of pieces in the way right now, but they're not always going to be in the way. That I don't think was good either. So I'm guessing right now the computer would give me an advantage. Just because, I mean, that blocks a normal development square for the knight. I still think they should have played e5 here. Or maybe maybe they're building to that. Maybe this is coming next, and then this. Or maybe maybe they're going to go for c5. But I think c5, I'm going to lock it. I'm going to lock that too. I think. And now I'm wondering if I shouldn't uh, get this bishop up here because I'm not liking the look of of e3 right now. It's also hard for me to predict, very difficult for me to predict which one of these files is going to open up. For one thing, I don't know which which pawn is going to end up being pushed to the fourth rank first, or the fifth rank, I mean. So I don't know if the rook goes to e1 here looking at this, or that that seems reasonable. I, I, I don't want to dally too long, but this bot is rated 1,000, and I'm not seeing a lot of weak points yet. Okay. That pawn is defended by my knight. But I I don't know if that's a good idea to put that in front of your C pawn. But it does protect this. It adds another defender to E5. It, it, that is what knight to, uh, knight to C6 does. Adds another defender to that. So there's there are now multiple, well, two defenders of that square. However, I still think if they play e5 here, I'm going to, to play d5. So, do I have any pieces that are not defended? I have one piece that's not developed. I, I'm not liking d2 for this bishop just because then my queen is, is kind of stuck here. But doesn't d d3 runs into this, right? And then then I end up having to move the bishop again. Also that knight can go here, so maybe it's time to play a3. We talked about this earlier, didn't we? Fortunately, I have squares for my knight. My knight can go here and then back over there, which wouldn't be bad. My knight can also come back here, but then that blocks in my dark squared bishop. Um, but I have to decide now, I guess. <laughs> Um, well, I'm not sure what they're going to do about it over there. Oh, it removed. Nice. That pawn moved, removed the defender of that pawn. And now my queen is in danger. Okay. I thought this bot was a thousand. This said this bot's 1100. Did I say 1100 earlier? For some reason I was thinking it was a thousand. Okay. Well... Nothing else is hit but my queen. So, but my queen is short on spaces. Okay. Bishop guards that square. Their knight guards that square. This looks really sad to move it back there and or here. The knight guards that square. That leaves me, I mean, only this... But that's the worst square. I think d2 is the worst of all the squares because then the knight forks me over here. Gets my rook and my queen hit at the same time. So d2 is not good. So it's going to have to be d back to d1.
Yeah, got to go back to D1. Okay, process of elimination. None of the other squares make sense. And now the knight is locked in there and my pawn is gone. Yay. Um, well, we have a couple of options here. I can put the bishop where I probably should have had it in the first place. But do I want to trade my dark squared bishop for a knight there? Probably not. I can put this knight in here on f5. Which would threaten that bishop. And if that bishop moved, I would get this pawn. Oh, no. They have two, they have two pieces hitting f5. But so do I. Okay, I got better at this. My bishop guards that square too. I remember in a recent game, in a recent video I made, that I thought, oh no, I only have uh, one defender on that square, but the bishop back here is also defending that square. So if I moved here and the knight took, and I took with my pawn, well, that would just be a trade of knights and then my, oh man, I think I'm gonna lose this game. Already, I think I'm gonna lose this game. Because even if that happens, even if they, whoops, even if they take back with their knight and I take back with my pawn, uh, that's just an even trade and then this pawn moves forward, maybe. And I won't take with my rook. Oh no, I have I have pieces guarding that square too. Ah, uh, you know what? I, I'm probably just gonna lose this game anyway. Okay, that surprised me. That surprised me. I thought they were gonna take with their knight. Was that a mistake on the bot's part? I'm not sure. Okay, we've played the C pawn now. My guess is preparing d5, in which case I will take and they will take and then they will have two center pawns and I don't have any. I have zero center pawns. Okay. I need to get that knight out of there, don't I? Down here. And the bot is a pawn ahead. Not bad. I just removed one of my defenders of that pawn. Wow. Okay, then the bot hung the knight. I think I should take that first. No, I should take the knight first. Okay, and then pull a knight back someplace here no that blocks my b pawn i don't know i feel like i'm all chopped up here it's too bad i can't just skip two squares to the side that would be an okay spot i mean actually that's not bad if they hit with the a pawn then i can drop back right here where i was Oh no, they're okay. And then they're going to take this pawn, aren't they? Well, fooey. Okay. Yeah, I may I may just be lost. They didn't take it. They're just coming forward with the center pawns that they have now that I don't have. Um that's still not a free pawn. Although it would be a trade here, but then uh, they're going to win this. So, oh, wait. Uh, yeah, that is a free pawn, isn't it? I think that's a free pawn. Okay. Do I do it? They can get their queen there or their bishop. Um Yes, because then I get this pawn. Okay. When the bot gave me that knight earlier, that was the... I think that was the... Wow. 
um, it was a turning point in the game is what I was trying to say but now I'm I'm tactically in trouble I think I did pick up a free pawn but like is this rook defendable other than that or can I just should I just move it because I know I shouldldn't trade if I trade I'm risking a back rank mate back rank mate here Uh, I could defend it with the bishop. I could also defend it by putting a bishop in the way. I don't know if that's better. And that keeps this from happening and trapping this bishop down here. Maybe, right? Because if I move this, I expect that pawn to come forward because this pawn's not defended anymore and, and this battery would be pointed down here. So I would not have time to move my light squared bush bishop at that time. So I think I'm going to move it now. Okay, not sure about that. And then move this. Because now, if this pawn comes forward, my bishop's blockading it, and I can easily sidestep with the rook uh, and protect against that, I think. And also, if I have to move this bishop, now my rook is defended. Okay, those moves seem really weird, except I think maybe Laura is trying to plan something here against my queen, a discovered attack against my queen. Uh, if that bishop just slides slides down to f8, then their rook will be aiming right here. So I have to be careful. But now my rooks see each other, so I'm not as worried about that anymore. And my bishop's back to slightly better squares. This one, I think, is an even better square. And I'm wondering if I shouldn't put it here. No, but I should take care of the queen problem first, right? Ah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. And it's already 17 minutes into this. Um, um, um. I, I need to get my queen off of this file. There can be no other reason for that rook move other than to line it up here. I mean, I could go there. Maybe. Does that... I don't know if that does anything or not. I was just thinking if I'm back here, I'm still defending that pawn. But if I, I don't know. If I come back here, I was thinking maybe they might try marching up this way or something. But yeah, I want to get off the file. I just don't know what's the best way to do it. Like maybe this is better. I, I really don't know. Is it better to come all the way back and then maybe I can rotate up through this way or at least protect this pawn? That's what I'm going to do. Okay. It's pointing here, but nothing else is pointing there, so I'm not too worried about that. Maybe the queen is getting out of the way of this again, uh, preparing this push. So I should probably just go ahead and move the rook now. Or should I do this first? No, I don't know, I don't know. I'm gonna move the rook. Those aren't hitting the same squares, so I'm not too worried about that. Not too worried, but then there's this. This is coming, right? Do I need to put my queen back over there? Is that what I should have done in the first place?
Good grief. No, because then the... Oh, no, because then I would just take the pawn. Okay. Well, now I'm not going to take the pawn, but now the now nothing can challenge my queen here, right? Oh, I uh, not quite a free bishop. I was going to say the pawn is pinned, but it doesn't matter. There's a rook here. And now the queen is guarding that pawn. So if I take this and this rook comes here, I can't take with check like I could a second ago. Um, okay. But I mean, once I take the bishop and once the rook takes, I can just get out of the way of the rook. I think. Yeah. I, I think that's probably best, right? Just sidestepping the rook. For that matter, I, I could even sidestep further. And, you know, come back someplace, but because I definitely don't want to do this right now. But I would like my queen to be available for that, just in case. So maybe this, maybe the king has come forward to defend the pawn. Okay, that was smart. I think. Maybe I shouldn't have played this one on video. Um, <laughs> I might end up losing it. Okay, I, I really don't know what to do. I feel like this is kind of a temporary measure, although maybe not. My opponent really can't get to it without sacrificing a rook right now. And it's protecting this pawn. And they don't, because they don't have a G pawn or an E pawn anymore, that pawn is safe. Makes me wonder if I shouldn't try a rook lift here at some point. Uh, but I would have to go there, right? Because this pawn is guarding those two spots. So I can't lift a rook to one of those. So maybe here, uh, aiming to come up this way and then over. But that's, eh, well, oh, two pawns guard that spot. Maybe it would be okay. Or should I anchor this pawn in first? Nah, I mean they can't get to it. If they if they do that, I'm taking it right. Maybe. No. God, what do I do? Like I have a check, but that I mean they just take it, right? Ah, yeah. Let's do that. Hopefully that's not a blunder. And if I take it, then they uh, they have clearer files for those. I take, they will take back, and then what? And I really wanted, yeah, I should have defended that pawn. I guess I can still defend it. Yeah, I can still defend it. Okay. What was that? What did that do? The reason I wanted to defend this pawn is because I was thinking about sticking my bishop here, which would cut off any uh, heavy pieces from push from being behind that pawn. But it worked better when the king was back there. My, that's when I first thought of this idea, putting the bishop on d5 protected by this pawn. Uh, the king was there, I think. I was thinking about pointing at it, but now it wouldn't work. I think I'm going to go ahead with my idea of a, of a rook lift. Okay. Now are they going to try to come in around the side? No, they're just going to waste a move. Oh, well, they couldn't come around the side here because my bishop was guarding that square. Okay, but they're still thinking about coming around that way. Um, well, I can get behind that pawn, but that would then it would just move forward. So that doesn't do anything. Okay. And then the question becomes where to put that rook that I just lifted. Should I go there to guard the fully open file now that that file's open? The bot didn't make a move to open that file until until I got my rook out of there. I guess that makes as much sense as anything else.
it would be guarded by my queen across here. But I could also, I'm also thinking of this because that rook would be pinned to the king. So I think it might take. In which case I could force a queen trade. I could take back with my queen, which would be check and hitting their queen. So then they would take, but then I would double my pawns. But, I, but I'm ahead, I'm a piece ahead. So maybe that's good. Okay, I, I, maybe I've been thinking about this wrong. They might take with their queen first. No, they wouldn't, because then I could just take with the pawn to start. Okay, I'm gonna do that. The king just moved out of check. I mean, out of the discovered check. Okay, well then should I just take this rook? Then I would have a check down there and the king would just escape here, which would be open to a discovery check. I'm gonna do that. Has to go there. Okay, now, oh, now I can check with the pawn. No, but then uh, the queen would take the pawn and my queen. Okay, so not good. However, anywhere I move this bishop is check. So what if I were to move my bishop right there to c6, which would be aiming at that rook, which I'm already aiming at, and that's check. How would they get out of that check? It looks a little dangerous because of this, but I think I would have it at that point. Unless they block the check with the queen. If they block the check with the queen, they would be threatening mate. So I would have to take. They could take back with their pawn, because that would be check, and then I could take the bishop. I think I'd be okay. Check. And then I get the I get the rook. With any of the three, all three of my pieces are pointing at that rook. I think taking with the queen is best, but I could be wrong. And I, and I have to worry about back rank mate. This protects the rook and the bishop. Okay. Um, now I'm up two pieces. A rook and a bishop. But any if I move my queen off the diagonal, I lose the bishop, so maybe I should protect the bishop at this point. Because at first I was thinking about taking this pawn, but my bishop just hangs after that check. So I don't think that's good. Or is it? Check. I assume they would take my bishop because if they went to the back rank, I would I would bring my rook this way. So check on f7. If they capture my bishop, then I can go check here, protected by the pawn, and force the queen trade, and I'll be left with a rook. And if they don't take the bishop, I can just put the bishop back. And if they block with the queen, I take it. Okay, that's what I thought they would do. Now we force the queen trade. And yes, they get a pawn out of it, but I have a rook left. And a passed pawn that they can't get to. Oh, they can get to it. No, they can't. Yep, too late. Okay. I'm breathing a sigh of relief now because uh, I'm going to get their passed pawn here. And you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and take some of their other pass pawns too. Some of their other pawns. Yeah. And then we can maybe lat. Nope. We're not going to ladder mate them because they went and hid behind that pawn. So, well, they can't move that pawn now, which means they have to move this one. But I'm going to put this rook right here coming over this way. Check. They can move forward, but they didn't. So, yep, now we cut them off right here. Okay, 
and now we have a ladder mate. And I'm just going to do it the simplest way possible because I don't want any mistakes. Okay, 57 moves. Wow. That was tougher than I thought it would be. Let's run the game review. Okay, it says I did not do as well as I did against some of the other bots with only 84.1% accuracy, and that includes three mistakes on my part, not to mention the inaccuracies. And if you look at the little graph here, there was definitely a part right at the end of the opening where I made some error, and I think it was when I lost my D-pawn, because when they moved forward, that G-pawn, which attacked my knight, my knight was the only thing defending my D-pawn because I hadn't put my bishop on E3. I bet that's where that was, is where I was down for a little bit. And then apparently one of my mistakes was right there where I dropped to minus 2.86 at some point for something. But then the bot made a mistake and we jumped up to plus four. So let's click the start review and see where that was. Oh, wow. We did book moves to six. Okay, that's pretty good for not having a book available in front of me. The King's Indian Defense. It says I've played this 17 times with a 24% win rate. Look at that. That's what it says, with a 24% win rate. Um, well, I may have played the King's Indian a couple of times as black. I don't know how many times. I, I think I've played it more than that, or faced it more than that as white. I think I've won more than a quarter of them, but I, I don't know. I'd have to check my records. Okay, the queen moving there was a mistake. We did wonder about that. I should have put the bishop on e3, right? It's thinking. Probably must not have been that then. Well, that's inaccurate. I, st I still would have been up almost plus one. But it's better than what I did play. Okay. Did it want... Didn't want d5. Okay, come on. What is... It? I'll just click the hint button. Was it e5? Or was it rook to e1? That was an inaccuracy also, but slightly better than the other inaccuracy. Okay, click the hint button. It was e5 that, that they wanted here. Okay, that one's the best. Nearly plus two. Okay. Well, I told you, I, I'm never sure in any of these positions, not just the King's Indian, but any of the positions in which all of these pawns are about to contact each other. I never know which one to expect. Now, in a couple of the, in the couple of the openings I play, I know which pawn is expected to be moved by my opponent, but that doesn't mean that's the one my opponent's going to move. They might move one of the other ones, and then I've placed my rook on the wrong file. That's not going to be an open file, so... Uh, that's what it says. It didn't even count that as a problem when I I lost the e pawn. It just went right past that uh, when I when I let that happen. But maybe the the whole queen move and the not playing e five earlier is what let that happen. Maybe. But moving my bishop back was definitely not good. What should I have done then? That was the mistake that gave me my lowest point of the game. I should have moved it back one space, or should... Oh, I should have just taken the knight. No, that wasn't it. Should I have just taken the pawn? Okay, taking the knight would not have been as bad as running away with the bishop. Okay, should I have just taken the pawn then? I should have just taken the pawn, knowing that I would get the knight. Okay, because I assume they would take my bishop, and then I would get their knight. Okay. Wait, I didn't even see the mistake that put me up plus four. Oh, that was a mistake? That was part of my plan! That's my last mistake. But it left me up plus 13. I must have had something... You overlooked the chance to pin a piece to the enemy king. Oh, I see it now. Well, how about that? Okay. 
Yeah, and that would have led to, it says, made an eight. Okay, well, I thought my plan was pretty good. It just made it take longer. Okay, um, but what was the, where's the graph up there? So let me see this graph. Right there is the mistake that put me down minus, uh, let's switch over to this and see what it says. Well, it's not minus 2.8 like the like the game review said. It's only minus 1.7, and only if they take here. If they take my pawn, it's only minus 1.3, and if they do anything else, white, has, white still has the advantage. Here, I honestly thought they were going to trade off for the knight, which was one of the reasons I had put the bishop back here. I thought they were going to do this, and then I was going to take with my one of those two. I don't know which one yet. And it says that was their best move, but it's definitely, it's not minus 2.8, like the game review said. Okay, but what did they do instead? They pushed that pawn, and that gave me plus 3. Not plus 4, like the game review said. That was plus 4.8 or something? It's plus 3.8. Because this, this engine is running at a deeper depth than the game review. And here I should have, oh, I should have taken the knight with my queen. Well, that makes sense. Okay. I missed a couple of tactical sequences in the beginning, but apparently after that, I once they uh, once they lost their knight here, I ended up with a a decent enough lead that I never lost. So, but yeah, my plan at the end when I traded off the queens here. The game review says that's the best move, but here, look at this. What, it, what does it say? It says I would also have made in nine if I played queen to a7. And rook b1 gives me made in 11. Oh, because I, I would have mate there, and there, they would have to basically sacrifice a piece to stop it. Okay. Well, I thought my plan was just fine because it gave me plus 14, plus 16, plus 18. It's still running. Yeah, plus 18. Because it it basically gave them no choice except to take my queen. And I would take back, and when they took back, I have this passed pawn. So I, like once I, once I saw that, that they're forced to trade off and I'm left with the rook, I was completely confident at that point, and I was not interested in finding the fastest or most efficient mate i just knew that i had it so but anyway uh thanks for watching and uh hopefully this helped it, i think it helped me because it gave me a couple of things to look out for this bot was definitely more difficult to play against than the lower rated bots we'll see you next time